So in this lesson, we're going to do a quick review of some log rules, basic log rules. So at the top, we have three log rules that can be used for a logarithm of any base b. The first rule, the log base b of x times y equals the log base b of x plus the log base b of y. The second rule which um, is for the log base b of x divided by y, well, that equals the log base b of x minus the log base b of y. And our third log rule here, the log base b of x to the y, that equals y log base b of x, where you can take the exponent and bring it to the front of the log. So let's apply these rules to try and solve a few log problems. Lots of different strategies that you can use here. So first, if I'm solving for x and log base 16 of x equals 3 fourths, I'm going to change this into exponential form to get the log out to get the x out of the log. So this is going to become um, x equals 16 to the 3 fourths. Now I can write um, 16 in its lowest base form, which is 2 to the 4th. And when I multiply those exponents, I get x is 2 cubed or 8. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing in the next problem for my first step. I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. So I have 64 to the x equals 32. And then I notice that 64 and 32 are same base numbers. 64 is 2 to the 6th. And 32 is 2 to the 5th. Well, if I have two powers with the same base, that means their exponents must be equal to each other. So x must equal 5 sixths. In this next problem, I'm going to, again, approach the same way. I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. b to the fourth equals 81. And I'm going to write 81 in its lowest base form, which is 3 to the 4th. So now I have two powers that equal to equal each other whose exponents are equal. Well, that means that the bases must also be equal. So b must equal 3. This last one here is a rule you may or may not remember. Um, and 4 to the log base 4 of 32 well, that is going to equal 32. So the rule is b to the log base b of x will always equal x. And I'm going to solve this on the next mm -hmm. slide to show you why that property works. So if we consider this question, let's say I'm trying to find y if y equals b to the log base b of x. Well, what if I take the log of both sides of this equation? I say the log base b of y equals the log base b of b to the log base b of x. So I took the log of both sides of the equation, and now I can move the exponent to the front of the equation. So that will give me the log base b of y equals the log base b of x times the log base b of b. Well, we know that the log base b of b equals 1 
because that is asking what power do you have to raise B to to get B? So that's one. And when I plug a one in there, I get the log base B of Y equals the log base B of X. Well, in that case, Y must equal X. And going back to our original question, I would say that therefore, um, b to the log base b of x equals x. So natural logs are follow the same rules as other logs. Natural logs have a base of e. So following those same rules, I can say that the natural log of a times b equals the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. Or the natural log of a divided by b equals the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. And finally, the natural log of a to the b equals b times the natural log of a. Again, you can bring that exponent to the front. So the natural log of E, keeping in mind that um, a natural log is a log with a base of E, this question is asking, what power do I need to raise E to to get E? And that is one. So the natural log of E is one. The natural log of one, again, think about what is this asking, this is asking, what power do I have to raise e to to get 1? Or in other words, e to the x equals 1, what is x? And that is 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Okay, here on this next problem, I can move, bring that 7 to the front of my equation and make this 7 times the natural log of e. We just showed that the natural log of e is 1, and so my answer here is 7. On this last problem over here, I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of e to the negative 6th. And then I can bring that negative 6 to the front. And then, of course, again, we know that the natural log of e is 1, and so our log equals negative 6. All right, our last few example problems here, we are going to, in these first two expressions, combine these into a single log. So first, before I can combine the logs, they must each have a coefficient of 1. So this is going to be the natural log of 3 cubed m minus the natural log of 9. And we saw a rule earlier that when you have subtraction, you can combine those into a log of a quotient. So this will be the natural log of 3 cubed over 9, which of course I can simplify. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And now I've simplified that expression into a single log. Similarly, on this next one, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the coefficients are 1 of both of my logs. So I'm going to make that 1 half an exponent of the 4. Oops dropped a log there, and that must be the natural log of 5. Now, a sum of two logs equals the log of the product of the arguments. So this is going to become the natural log of 4 to the 1 half times 5. And of course, 4 to the 1 half is 2, so we just have the natural log of 2 times 5, or the natural log of 10. Finally, down here on the bottom, this is a rule that we looked at earlier. The rule that I showed you earlier said b to the log base b of x equals x. Well, 
Following that rule, we know that e to the natural log of x, that's the same thing as e to the log base e of x, and so it must therefore equal x. So in this first problem, e to the natural log of u will equal u. Now, in the next problem, I'm going to have to change the format a bit because I need the exponent to just say e to the natural log of something. So I'm going to first rewrite this as e to the natural log of u to the sixth. I'm going to bring that six up and make it an exponent. And now I have e to the natural log of something, which is going to become e to the sixth. On this next problem, same thing. I'm going to rewrite my equation as e to the natural log of x to the negative fourth, which I know is going to become x to the negative fourth, or 1 over x to the fourth. And that is my final answer. Okay, last problem here. Oh, I've got a tricky one. I've got a couple things going on. I need to rewrite it. So this is going to become e to the natural log of the square root of x cubed, which can be also written as e to the natural log of x to the 3 halves, which means my answer is x to the 3 halves.